It's very easy to model yourself after Sam in a sense that you want to be, you want to have that personality when you compete because, I mean, you see him, he's like always having a good time and you're like, oh, I want to have a good time too. Go, go, go. Ah, almost. Fine, I had to get my warm up. He's a happy guy. I very rarely see him get even just a little bit upset. He has a charming personality. He likes everybody he meets. He always just has this positive vibe going on around him. easy to talk to and he's always cracking jokes so it's, it's really fun to be around him and it you know helps everyone out in the gym and outside the gym as well because then the positivity just kind of infects you too. I don't want too much pressure. I guess that's really it. Like this intense feeling that I have to do good and I have this desire to just like like give everything up for this one thing and I just want everything to you know like be smooth. Just like everything flows together. Every thing with friends, with school, kind of balances each other out and everyone's having a good time enjoying their life because they're doing exactly what they want to do and you have to be passionate about your life because if you're not, you're not going to be having the greatest time of your life and why can't you have the greatest time of your life every day? Next meet is PNG Championships, so that's pretty much everything we're working up to. We have six week cycles, and so we try to peak at the end of the six week for endurance and strength. Today is one on six, so one routine on every event. And I think this is the first time after one on six where it's really hard, and then after that it gets easier and easier and focus more on perfection and cleaning everything up. Good, Sam. Nice right. Haley again. Looks like Haley's going in today. Yep, today's the day. Well, both my parents were gymnasts at Cal Berkeley, and they decided, hey, we were both gymnasts. Why don't we put our kid in it when he's two years old? When I was young, I just climbed on everything, and so I was jumping off the roof, and my dad would catch me and chuck me up in the air like 20 feet, have me do 360s, and pick my feet up, throw me, do double backflips, and this is all before I was like two years old. So ever since I was very, very little, I was already, I probably had better air awareness at that point than I did most kids when they're like seven years old. I was doing all those mommy and me classes, and finally, eventually, the upper level guys were like, hey, this kid looks pretty good. And so when I was seven, made it on the team, and from there, started finding the passion for the sport and you know I did other sports alongside gymnastics with baseball, soccer, basketball and hockey and it didn't make too much sense to me to do all those other sports when gymnastics was obviously what I seemed to love doing the most. I was just born to flip around and do crazy things and acrobatics and ever since then it was just come easy and it's always been fun for me. It's pretty high that too. Real clear there, no problem. Just tighter her legs. The action is there. Yeah, the very first time that I saw Sam, I knew he was a very talented individual, and of course I had been given a heads up on it, but uh, yeah, you could see his talent right from the get-go. And I know that he initially was planning on going to Berkeley, but both his parents went there. And I, you know, I don't think it was hard to get him to change his plans once once he visited. It wasn't more about gymnastics, it was more about my personal experience. I didn't want to go somewhere that had great gymnastics that I wasn't absolutely going to enjoy life outside of gymnastics. His teammate really wanted to come to Michigan, Jordan, and uh, Sam and Jordan are, are real good friends, so I extended an invitation for both of them to come on an official visit. I mean, this school just fit me best. I came on my recruiting trips, went to other schools, and the academics, the campus, the coaches, the gym, the teammates, and I did get, I did have a great time on all of my trips, but you know, in the end, you just have to go with what your heart really desires, and it was Michigan. That's it, Sam. All right, good job. Good job. 
Very good. Very good. Living back in California, it was always too tempting to go to the beaches and, you know, maybe take a day off just to hang out with my friends at the beach and recover and relax. <laughs> Definitely I was a very happy kid growing up, but it wasn't until I came to college that I actually buckled down, went to practice every day, dedicated a lot more time to rehab and conditioning. and. You know, I came, I was a freshman, and there was all these seniors who were doing awesome gymnastics, and all I could really think of is, like, I want to beat all of them. And my freshman year, I ended up doing that. I definitely am very competitive, but I, I mean, it's all friendly. That's the best part, because I know if I didn't have my teammates, I wouldn't be here today. And they're the one reasons that, I mean, I push them, they push me. It's a friendly co competition we all have, and when you're working together as a team for a team competition, everyone's always trying to be the best. But it's having that high level of gymnastics always happening around me that really pushed me to the next level. Okay, let's go, Sam. Come on. Good. As I got older, maturity levels rose. I was trying a lot harder routines going into the uh, Puerto Rico Cup because I had some time off in between for like during the summer just to try to amp up my start values as we led into the Olympic year. So I was like really excited to go and compete, but the very first event on floor, did the triple double totally fine, did all my passes like perfectly. And it comes to the dismount, which I've been doing for about five years at that time, which was a full in. Uh, for some reason, I just took off weird. I landed short and I guess people told me they could hear it just like snap. I thought like I just landed short and they stung for a little bit. I mean, I wasn't ready to stand up and salute, but I just stayed on there and was like, all right, I'm done. Like someone helped me. But they told me that my ankles were just, I just like banged the, my heel bones together and so they were just bruised and so I was like well I don't want to be a wimp and like stop competing because I have bone or like bone bruises but the next day I went and got x-rays and like yeah you you broke both of them so then I was like a little disappointed from that but then it got me back in the gym to work harder because I knew I hadn't accomplished the goal I wanted to and then it gave me motivation to train hard for 2012 and felt like I could redeem myself if I made the Olympic team Pommel horse, I knew, was the one event that I had to work on a lot. After I broke my ankles, I had a lot of opportunity to, you know, better my pommel horse routine. I knew that was the one event where I could find my in on the Olympic team. 2011, beginning of 2012, like, I wasn't on the, any of the lists. In a way, that was probably part of the motivation that really pushed me to actually get my name out there and be one of those people that is a contender for the 2012 team. really saw me do any outstanding competitions up until the 2012 Visa Championship. That was like my biggest breakthrough moment. I'm up there with the big dogs kind of thing and I always thought I was just that young guy that no one was really looking at at that time. That was the time where I like was close to beating John Orozco, close to beating Donnell. I think I beat Jonathan Horton which was like really mind blowing to me at that time. I was like, I didn't feel like I deserved this. Like those guys are so great. What makes me so special? Like in a way I always thought 2016 was more possible for me as I was growing up. When I finally finished so high, I was like, wow, maybe like things are, maybe this is more possible than I thought. Okay, I did this here. Like why can't I do it here? at uh, the 2012 Olympic trials. Unfortunately, that was the competition where I sprained my ankle again and couldn't do the second day of competition. But that just led into the most nerve-wracking pommel horse routine of my life. I knew I had to just trust my training going into that one day. When you don't do any gymnastics for four events and then you have to go up and just do pommel horse, you definitely have the nerves, you got the shakes, but I feel like I just get in this bubble where I can't hear anything, I don't see, I don't like understand that everyone's watching me at this one moment in time. I just feel myself doing this skill, doing one skill at a time, and eventually the routine was over and I was just like, oh my gosh, I did it. Like, 
that's what I need to feel if I want to compete on this Olympic stage. Next day, they announced the team, and that was like the most nerve-wracking moment ever, just because pretty much they just like talk for way too long, and everyone's just like, just tell me the names already. The next name to the 2012 Olympic team is... And everyone's just like, stop it, stop it, you can't do this to me. And then she's like, okay, okay, fine, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Sam McCulloch, and I was just like, at that point, I was just like done. I was like, oh, thank God. And Kurt was there, he just kind of like pats me on the back. He's like, good job, Sam. I gotta give the MPC credit, because they were probably under some heat that he didn't compete everything, and they still put him on the team, but that was definitely the right choice. I didn't cry. It was, like, he was definitely very happy, but I think, like, it takes a lot to get me crying. That should be one of those moments that makes you cry, but I guess it, it takes a little more. I would definitely was hoping that I would be selected to do the all-around at the Olympics, but you know, you can only argue so much, and then after that, you just have to be appreciative. Prelims was awesome. It was the most energized I've ever seen anyone on the national team. We were all lively, joking around. At the end of it, just seeing our USA up in the first spot was, it was just a proud moment to be an American. As the competition came along, nerves definitely set in. It, I mean, it wasn't the Olympic team finals that we were asking for. So when I did do vaults, I landed a little crooked on my ankle, and so it was slightly sprained at that time. But after team finals, obviously, I only had vault finals left to do. So you're at the Olympics, you're not going to not do vault finals. I went up, just ran as hard as I could, like adrenaline pumping, hit the vault as hard as you can. It was just one of those moments where everyone in the crowd, like 20,000 people, all the cameras, like everyone that's watching the Olympics at the time is like watching you. Did the double front and stuck it. I think that was the first time I ever actually stuck it in a competition and then for it to be in event finals at the Olympic Games with everyone cheering you on and the whole world watching. I guess that was just the time to pull through and I couldn't have been more pleased to have ended on that kind of note. When he stuck his vault and went back and kissed the vault table, that was just, that, that's Sam. You know, it was one of the most proud moments of my life, uh, being part of that Olympic uh, finals. The next competition I have coming up is uh, PNG Championships. Just the same old thing, go out, hit as many routines as I can, go six for six on both days, and just try to have as much fun as I always do, and go out and put on another good performance.